Hello everyone. We have Saturn soon making its way into Aquarius. And wherever Saturn is, there is this work that we're doing in setting up shop. It's really where we're grounding and embracing the necessary boundaries and definitions and parameters to make our life livable and workable. Saturn really does teach us about embodiment. But there's an important principle wherever Saturn is, and that is, as we determine our life, as we make choices and decide what our standards will be, what our foundation, what it is that we're going to build, we're basically establishing criteria. We're determining within our own ethics, our own values. What is the right way that we choose to be a human being, to get our job, to get the work done, to be in relationship, to be here? And we're always faced with a choice to follow an external standard. And that's, you know, what we learn from society, what we've been conditioned to believe is right, what will provide external validation or to seek an internal compass to really understand what is my own inner sense of right and wrong. What determines, according to me, success? And when I go to sleep at night, how do I feel in my conscience? Because we can create anything with Saturn that we put our mind to. We can establish conditioning and patterns of behavior, patterns of thought. But the question really becomes, is this you? Is this the life that you really want to live? And are we really taking responsibility to really find ourselves? So Saturn, wherever it is on the deepest level, is getting to know ourself. What is important to me? And I'm going to determine myself to create the necessary parameters to set the plan to steadily and consistently create the life that resonates with my deep inner sense of why I'm here and what I want to do. Now, let's look at Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn will be entering Aquarius and kind of spending the rest of this year going back and forth. So it's very much that window of transition where we feel something new coming. What kind of work, what kind of inner work is Saturn asking us in moving into Aquarius? Well, Aquarius is about the undefined, unconditioned, whereas Saturn and Capricorn correspond to everything that is defined, everything that is conditioned. Aquarius is the original mind. It's what everything is as it is created to be. Now we walk around life with our stories our sense of I belong here, I don't belong there. We have these closed circles, our community, our sense of this is where my life is, this is what I'm identified with. And all of this is conditioning. Most people who grow up within a particular religion or political party will identify with that for most of their life. So Aquarius really asks us to step aside from our conditioning and not to hold so tightly our convictions. This idea of this is what it has to be. This is how life has to look. And so the work that we're doing with Saturn and Aquarius is we're disciplining Saturn, our minds, to open to a more inclusive way of thinking about what it looks like to live here in this world. And it addresses everything that comes within this human experience. Because Saturn is really about that. Saturn is so masterful. Saturn wants us to be conscious of how we're doing everything. What is it saying about our goal, about our intention, about our motive? Now, Saturn and Aquarius, the fear here can be this need to hold on to what is known, right? So this is my relationship. This is how I define this relationship. This is my community. This is my job. This is how I make money. Taurus, Uranus and Taurus, we're in the Saturn. 
a lot of these things are going to be really up for reevaluation. And so the key here is to discipline a more open and free mind. The essence of Aquarius is inclusion. It's giving and it's sharing because really Aquarius reflects this principle of creation being all inclusive with all of itself, that all of life is one ecosystem. And we also learn in Aquarius that all of life is reflected in our own internal psyche. And so the question really is, are there parts of our own self that we are suppressing? That we've said, nope, you're not a part of the club. You're not invited. You're not included. You don't belong here. That will reflect itself in the aspects of our own life that we have said aren't suitable, right? Aren't acceptable. And then other people that we say, I can't relate there. I can't be there. And pretty much all of us can relate to the experience of having been totally one-upped by life upon realizing mm, all of those things that I thought were not me, I've had to actually open up more space to include that as well. So there is this opening in life for immense thriving and potential and healing, but we have to really train a more inclusive, unjudgmental, a, a less judgmental, a, an, a less restrictive way of thinking. Now, here's a little promo for you. I'm going to be in Costa Rica in a couple months with Nadia, with a bunch of other world-class astrologers, and we're putting together our second Astrology Rising retreat. And one of the main talks that I'll be addressing is healing sexuality and relationships in the new paradigm. The focus for my talk will be Saturn, in particular Saturn and Aquarius. Now, the reason why I'm addressing Saturn when it comes to sexuality and intimacy, as opposed to maybe Mars and Venus, is because Saturn really is the foundation. Saturn are the core assumptions and the conditioning that we hold within that basically says what's right and what's wrong about being a human being. And so if we enter into a new phase of life, but we're taking within this new phase all these old thoughts and patterns, we will recreate what we've known. And yet, if there's evolutionary timing that says it is time to evolve, we have to update our thinking and be willing to explore many of the paradigms and the structures that we've created and the motivation for these underlying structures. Now, this talk isn't going to be saying the right way to do relationship, the right way to be a human. It's going to be offering a perspective and a very interesting astrological view into the evolution of consciousness and how society and family and structure and how we live together as human beings itself is a constantly evolving process. Now, Saturn consciousness wants to say, this is how we've always done it, right? You draw a picture of Jesus in the 1700s and Jesus happens to look like the way people look then. There's a tendency for our minds to envision the past and the future in terms of now. But when we decondition ourselves from time and the stronghold of identifying strictly with what we've known, there's this space to apprehend a greater appreciation for what is spontaneously emerging within the collective. And we have to acknowledge that the way that we've been living is only touching the surface of what is possible. The possibility for joy and wellness that we can create in really shifting the paradigm of how we're living, which really emanates from a significant shift in how we are thinking, how we are in relationship to ourselves. So we are called upon at this time to do this work, to look inside and really evaluate our own conditioning. So I'm very excited to talk about this and explore this more in depth. I so hope you will join us. It's going to be such a fun experience. Maybe you've heard a little bit about it. It's at the beach. We're going to have yoga, qigong, music, lots of friendship and community and sharing. It's a truly meaningful activity. Much love to you all.